Hello and welcome back. Today we are talking about XG Boost or Extreme Gradient Boosting. Now, quick uh, heads up, this tutorial will be a bit more technical than the other ones. So feel free to skip it if you don't want to go into this much level of uh, technicalities. But otherwise, here we go. Let's have some fun. All right, so here is uh, our original data and our residuals as we discussed previously. Now, what we're going to talk about is once we have these residuals, so this original data was our first model, right? So that's uh, where we started. This uh, original data, we applied the 0 0.54, which is the average. Then we got these residuals. Then we got the, we're taking these residuals and we're applying our second model, which is a decision tree. Now, the question that we're going to be answering today is how does the model know where to put these lines, where how to split the data? And of course, we're talking about, just as a side note, we're talking about a very simplistic example with one depend, independent variable. So it looks like this, it's very easy to visualize. In reality, of course, there's many, many more independent variables and the process is more sophisticated, but for illustration purposes, we're going to keep stick to one independent variable. So where, how does the model know where to put these um, lines, how to split this decision tree, how to uh, split it into leaves. Um, and the interesting thing is that XGBoost doesn't apply your typical uh, decision tree, uh, just your standard decision tree algorithm with its standard process where it actually has its own very special uh, type of decision tree. And we're going to talk about that. So the first thing that needs to be done is even before these lines are applied, we need to take all of these values that we have and we need to calculate the similarity score. And it's going to be a similarity score of the root because that's before we apply the lines, right? So this is called the root part for this, for this level. And the similarity score is calculated as the sum of all the residuals. So you take all of these values that you have and you square them. Uh, so you, this is very important. You apply the squaring after you take the sum. So some of them will cancel each other out. So these ones are above zero, these ones are below zero, these ones are above zero. So some of them will cancel each other out. You square it and then you divide by the number of residuals total and you add lambda. So now lambda, quick note on lambda, this is a regularization parameter to prevent overfitting. This is something that you can hyper tune in your model. Uh, for illustration purposes, we're going to keep Lambda at zero, but again, you'll be able to hypertune it in the hands-on um, when you're doing the hands-on if you like. And let's say, for example, without going into too much mathematical uh, detail and like just doing all the calculation, let's say that all of this um, similarity score is equal to 16 for all of these values, let's say, uh, for argument's sake. Now, what happens next? Well, uh, we need to calculate similarity scores for uh, like basically we need to yeah, calculate similarity scores for hypothetical branches so let's say um this is our original data right and we already know the similarity score of the root of all of these values is 16. now the question is where do we put this first split right so we have two splits we're going to start one by one so where would we put the first split well let's say we put it here randomly put it over here what will the similarity score of each one of these leaves be? So the left leaf, again, we would apply this same formula, but just to the values in here. And then for the right leaf, we would apply the same formula to the values in here. And again, some of them would cancel each other out because some are below zero and some are above zero. So we get the similarity for the left and similarity for the right. And then we need to calculate something called the gain. And the gain is basically how much better are we, how much are we better off by having this split compared to how we were before. So previously the similarity was 16. Now we're going to take the sum of the similarities of the left and right and subtract that original similarity. So in this case, 43 plus 120, well, this <laughs> one of these numbers is incorrect. Um, anyway, so it should be, let's see what it should be. So it should be 123 over here. So that's my bad, we should have 123 over here. Um, so we add that 43 plus 123 minus 16 and we get, our 150 value. So that's our gain if we split like this. But what if we split it differently? What if we split like this? What will the similarity score be on the left and right? There they are. What will the gain be? That's what the gain will be. And again, if let's say we take a different split over here, what will the similarity score be on the left and right? There we go. Gain. That's our gain. So here we can see the highest gain. Um, so meaning that this split results in most similarity here plus here, and it's the highest compared to the original similarity of 16. So out of all the splits, 
We've got the biggest gain here, that's the largest gain. So that means that's the best split and that's the one we'll keep. Now, naturally, you'll probably have a question of how do we even choose these random locations? Um, why, why here? Why not a bit to the right, a bit to the left? Uh, there's a separate algorithm that takes care of that, that um, looks at um, uh, error, like uh, quantiles or looks at breaks down the data set into, in, into parts and then uh, does this uh, iteratively. We're not going to go into detail on that, but just keep in mind that there is an optimized way of looking for these splits without having to check all the possible positions, uh, like millions and millions of positions. It, it uh, does that with, uh, in a discre discretized way, with the discrete kind of step. Uh, but again, we're not going to go into that detail. It's a bit more technical than what we're uh, aiming for here. So that's the largest gain, so that's the best split. So we're going to keep that split. It's at about 71% of, of, um, of these values on this axis. It's from 0 to 100, remember, in our particular uh, data set. It could be anything else. It could be kilograms. It could be um, miles. It could be tire. It could be anything. Basically, that's, that's the split we'll keep. Now, how, how do we, what happens next? So that's this, this is the second model, right? So our second model that's applied to the residuals of the very first model. Um, so let's say for simplicity's sake that if you're on this side, then we're not going to split it any further. Even though in reality it can be split many, many times, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to say here it's not going to be split further. We're just going to have one more leaf, one more split here. So two leaves on this side. So how is that going to look? Well, um, where exactly? Where, where do we split next? Where do we split next? Well, we're going to do the same process. We're going to assume this is the root now. And we're going to look at different splits. So if we have this split, there's a S left and S right. The gain will be calculated as minus 36. So it's a bad gain. Like splitting like this is worse than leaving it on it, even leaving it as it is, because the gain is uh, negative, right? So these two values are uh, not as high as the as, uh, the um, similarity in the root. Now, uh, if we split somewhere else, let's say a bit more to the right, then we have the left and right, the gain, and there it is, 461. And let's say again, let's split over here. What will the similarity scores be? There's the gain, calculated 99. So obviously this is the largest gain, and so that means that is the best split that we can have. And uh, yeah, so we're going to keep that one, and as a result we have these two splits, and our model uh, our second model looks like this. Now, again, we could have more splits rather than just leaving at the average. We could have more and more and more and more splits over here and here. And of course, um, it could be also not just one independent variable, but it could be on many independent variables. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to keep it like this. And by the way, when does the split stop? Well, there's uh, three main times when some, a split would stop. When the, we reach the maximum depth of the tree that we set, uh, when there's no more gain in making a split, like we could see in this example over here, um, the gain is negative. So if we cannot find any split that gives us a positive gain, then we're not going to keep splitting. And the final one, if if there's just not enough data set inside each leaf, like we can set a minimum number of data sets or a minimum weight, it's called, of how many minimum um, observations you want to have in each one of these leaves, leaves and, and if it's below that then you don't keep splitting. So that's what it is but mostly it's about the depth of the tree that you set if you have a large data set of course. So now let's recap what we have with our full model. So at the start it's 0 0.54 and that is our uh, average that we apply. That's the very first model. Then the second model is, uh, which we applied to residuals level one, is over here. And that's the one we were building this whole time. So this whole time, this whole tutorial today, we've spent on figuring out where to put these. Um, and that was to create this one model, one tree. Um, then we would do the same thing to take the residuals of this model, then we would have them here, and then apply uh, the, how to build the uh, decision tree for this uh, for model number three. So this is model number one, model number two, model number three. How to build the decision tree here. Again, we would go under, undergo the same process. And then we would do the same thing again. We would go through the same process to build this decision tree. So I just wanted to point out that what we were doing today is just this one, uh, building this one decision tree. And XGBoost has its very specific, uh, unique way of building these decision trees. Uh, and that is through the um, similarity score and the gain.
Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning and I look forward to seeing you there.